Welcome back to Advance Wars 2. Last time we completed the Blue Moon campaign, as in we've completely done with that place. We've finished every single mission there, and now it's on to Yellow Comets. And you might be wondering why I'm not on the map screen yet. It's because, well, I decided to do a little something here. I thought since it's been so long since we actually saw uh, the intro, I'm going to play the Yellow Comet intro again, just to kind of get everyone back up to speed on what's happening in this country. Because... Yep, just a recap, after you finish Orange Star, which is basically the tutorial campaign, you then have access to both Blue Moon and Yellow Comet. Now, both of them open up at the same time, and technically you can actually complete both of them simultaneously if you want. Uh, but yes, whichever one's final mission you complete first will affect the final mission of the other one. But other than that, yeah, the thing is, me personally, I've always recommended uh, doing Blue Moon first and then Yellow Comet, simply because... It may not seem like it now, but Yellow Comet does get considerably harder than Blue Moon later on. But anyway, without further ado, here is the intro once again. We already have some interesting dynamics between characters here, but let's start things off with this one here. This is the mission that I really want to start things off on because, well, we definitely want to get this one out of there quickly because in comparison to Blue Moon, this mission is extremely easy. Um, and that might be a good thing, so we'll start things off on an easy note. Mainly, ugh, boy. One of these starting three Yellow Comet missions I am not looking forward to. Yeah, and sorry for the horribly glitched Yellow Comet soldiers. Um, how many times has Intel been right in this campaign? Just saying. <laughs> but we know who's taking the helm for this mission, and because it's so easy, it'll be a, um... It'll be a good time to talk about how this guy works. But anyway... That there is our first introduction to Yellow Comet's Mission Start theme. We'll be hearing that one for quite a while from now on. Now, okay, you might be wondering here why Sonya is giving us the tutorial on missile silos, given that we already had one uh, in Blue Moon. Well, that's because you can actually do this potentially before the Blue Moon silo missions, so they have to give you the tutorial here. Now, looking at our bases here, you might notice something a little odd. Wait a minute, those aren't the regular unit prices, are they? Yep, welcome to the main gimmick of the character that we're using here. Kanbei, the... Uh, I always used to call him Kanebi, but I really... Back then I wasn't even studying Japanese, so I didn't know how to pronounce this. Uh, obviously, Yellow Comet is um, pretty obvious what country that they're based off in real life, so anyway. Uh, Kanbei is pretty much the main um, commander of Yellow Comet, and he has a very interesting gimmick to him. As you can see, all of his units are 20% more expensive than normal. <coughs> if you remember a certain character back in Blue Moon, you might have already guessed what his main strength is. Yes, Kanbei is the exact inverse of Colin. His units are more expensive, but also more powerful than usual. And I mean much, much more powerful. Believe me. Kanbei's units as a whole 
Every single one of his units has an extra 30% in both attack and defense. The defense is a pretty big deal, and it actually makes him one of probably the most major defensive characters in this game. Of course, his units can dish out punishment just as well as they can take it. I mean, really well, actually. But anyway, you'll notice that we have ports on this map. Uh, probably not that worth it to go into naval combat here. You're too much blocked off by bridges and the like. But what we do want to do is get infantry up to those bases on the central island as fast as possible. The main strategy here being to take that central island as fast as possible, like I was saying. Now, as you can probably tell, oh, Flak's going to get one of those silos. Yeah, you want to be careful here because the enemy is definitely going to get the silos before you do, annoyingly. And uh, Kanbei kind of doesn't like getting hit by silos because they're kind of, you know, they penetrate his superior defense. And they offer a way for the enemy to weaken his troops without um, without having to worry about suffering an incredibly brutal counterattack. Because, yep, his troops are insanely powerful, believe me. And um, you might want to capitalize on one thing in terms of the uh, missile silos here. Infantry that are inside transports are safe from being damaged, even if the transport is hit. And that proved very useful back there. Now I have a full strength infantry ready to go out to the central island and capture some bases. Of course, we probably also want to, um... Ah, okay, that could be a problem. You might notice that he just missiled a couple of my units that were, that were already on bases. What this means is that I'm going to have to pay, I'm going to be forced to pay to heal them next turn. As you'll see here. And given that um, cost of repairs is a percentage of the unit's actual cost, outright cost, Kanbei, I believe, pays more for repairs than, than other people do, given his naturally higher prices. So that's actually kind of crippling to him. So anyway, we want to make sure that we actually block off uh, the silo there, just to make sure that Flak never uses any of the silos on this island. Uh, I probably want to actually start using these silos quite soon, um, that just so that Flak doesn't get to use them. Again, it doesn't matter how much HP the infantry have, they will always be able to use the silo just fine, so you don't need to worry about them getting hit by missiles. Speaking of getting hit by missiles, um, I've probably already explained this before, but missile silos can't actually kill anything. Uh, all they'll do is reduce them to 1 HP. Uh, all map-based damage works like this, as I may have explained before when we came to Olaf's superpower, which also inflicts 2 HP of map-based damage. Again, things like that can't kill, they can only weaken. And Flak already has tanks. This could be a problem. Uh, I know what I'm using the missile silo on. <laughs> anyway, though... Uh, didn't get it round to fully explaining Kanbei. Um, basically, yes, more powerful all around, more expensive. As a result, he can be kind of slow in the early game. Uh, you pretty much will only have enough money for infantry, and even then, his infantry are pretty darn expensive. And, uh, yeah, if I move it over one, I'll hit the transport as well, and force Flak to pay some money to repair that. But, okay, just meat shielding the infantry, because I need that uh, them safe for capturing, uh, and for getting the silos. And I've got another missile silo that I can potentially use here. Uh, of course, it's kind of unfair they put yours so much lower down than, um... Yours are slightly further away from your base than Flax are, so... Yeah, that is a bit annoying. But anyway, I could hit that big clump of infantry there. Please don't do that past me. Please don't, because the because really, I actually think it would be better to hit the tank again. Please pass me. Please tell me you... Please tell me you did... Thank you! Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I would have really gone angry at past me if they had actually hit the infantry, because yes, hitting that tank there was a much better option. Speaking of tanks, we might be able to get a few of our own soon. Yeah, it actually takes Kanbei quite a while to get his better units out there, but when he does, oh boy, when he does, things get wrecked. Believe me. Of course, the main benefit to having um, Kanbei's infantry early on is that, you know... Uh, also, by the way, you might be wondering, why pay extra funds for transports? Well, of course, the 30% defense boost also applies to them. So his transports are pretty darn resilient. And I mean really resilient. Um, so yeah, they make very good tanks. And speaking of tanks, one thing that's actually kind of cool about Kanbei, despite the fact that his early game is kind of slow and you'll mostly have just infantry for the beginning, 
Kanbei's infantry are actually very, very good tanks. Um, no pun intended, I'm not meaning to compare them to actual tanks. What I'm trying to say is, in terms of defensively, they are actually surprisingly resilient. In fact, not surprisingly, because, I mean, he's got the massive 30% defense boost. And, as you can see there, <laughs> yep, Kanbei's battleships are the single most expensive unit in the entire game. So, <laughs> um... Yeah, probably not going to be able to afford one of those uh, in this mission. And I have absolutely no idea why Flak just created a lander. For some reason, the AI in this game is really bad at using transports. You'd think you want to load it up and head for the central island immediately, but for some reason, he really doesn't seem content to do that. Speaking of landers, I will find that one area where Kanbei does suffer a little bit is on sea maps that rely on transports a lot, because his landers being really expensive, that kind of works against him a lot, and I mean really a lot. There's actually a later mission in the campaign mode of this game that, well, you'll see. It's one you really don't want to use him for, because um, he really suffers from his ridiculously overpriced landers. So, that's kind of a problem. But like I was saying, uh, his infantry are actually quite capable of holding the line against tanks. And it actually makes him actually pretty cool in the early game sometimes, when um, your opponent thinks that they can take down your infantry and you stand your ground. They're pretty awesome. Not to mention that Kanbei's mechs are pretty insanely powerful as well. For example, uh, hopefully that tank here is going to hit the mech and show me what I mean. Oh, wow, um, well, he's also showing me why he's too scared to even attack it. He knows how much of a beating he's going to receive on the counter. Unfortunately, Flak is sending artillery and more tanks our way. So we probably need to go for a couple more mechs, maybe. Of course, now we have a foothold in this central island. And now that we've got that and a lot of silos to weaken the oncoming troops, looks like things are about to turn around. Uh, I won't lie to you, this mission is actually very, very easy. And here you'll see why Flak did not attack me. 71% damage, right at you. Haha. <laughs> yep, Kanbei's mechs are pretty powerful, so, um... Yeah, they're probably your main form of offense in the early game. But once Kanbei gets tanks, believe me, regular tanks can pretty much do him quite well. Um, he doesn't even need medium tanks sometimes. And of course, making use of the whole uh, of the nice uh, infantry leapfrogging tactic here by moving them forward onto a an APC that hasn't moved yet, and then moving the APC, the infantry effectively get two moves in one turn, which is pretty nice. Works especially useful for mechs more than infantry, but still. And we've got a lot of roads here, so recons can kind of be alright. <laughs> Kanbei's recons are so good, they may as well be anti-airs against enemy infantry, seriously. And I probably don't want to hit that transport. You know what, I'll save that one, because I get this feeling that Flak is going to start producing medium tanks soon, and uh, that won't be good. The basic strategy with Kanbei is that he might be a little slow early on when he doesn't have that many production facilities or that, many, that much of an income. Once he gets a good income, oh boy. It's when things start getting really, really fun. Really fun. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of interesting. Colin and Kanbei are both direct opposites of each other. Both of them are some of the best characters in the game when played well, so... But they require pretty vastly different tactics, and I really don't want to risk getting hit by that indirect there. Kanbei's units are... Yeah, the one thing you got to know about him is, because his units are so expensive, you can't afford to be too callous with him, and that's stupid. Attack with one of your infantry... Ah, oh, pass me, you idiot, you fool! I Kill the infantry with your infantry, then use the tank to kill the APC, then use the other tank to kill the, um, unit behind it. Oh, you stupid fool! Ah, oh, stupid, dumb, 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 dumb past me. Bad past me. Bad past me. Listen to your future self's advice. Ah, oh, foolish fool, seriously. Ah, oh, if it hasn't become apparent, I hate past me sometimes. <laughs> Seriously, what I should have done there was attack with the infantry first, then tank to take out the APC, use the other tank to take out the other thing, and then take out the uh, artillery. Also, another good tactic that works well with Kanbei is to save funds from turn to turn so you can afford the most powerful units. I might not get a medium tank just then because I don't want to be too mean. <laughs> uh, Kanbei's medium tanks are pretty much the equivalent of everyone else's Neos, so uh, 
They're pretty crazy. They're almost ex as expensive as everyone else's Neos, come to think of it, but... It is pretty well worth it. But yeah, you kind of need to conserve your troops, though, because, again, they're expensive, and, uh, yeah, you need to pretty much, uh... Can't afford to lose too many of them. Now, a few more things about Kanbei I should probably mention. Due to the fact that his, um... Main advantage, his 30% attack and defense boost on everything is offset by the cost of his units. Suffice to say, Kanbei is pretty horribly broken on pre-deployed maps. Unless you're planning on teaming him up against multiple people at once. Wow, Flak is too scared to attack me. <laughs> yeah, really goes to show just how strong this guy is if um, <laughs> the AI is actually too intimidated to even attack. Wow. But anyway, like I was saying, unless you're planning on teaming multiple players against him, please try not to use Kanbei in pre-deploy maps too much, because he's pretty cheap there. He pretty much has no downsides whatsoever. And the reason for that is why I was mentioning before that he might be a good character to use in Blue Moon's Final Factory mission, simply because uh, he gets a small pre-deployed army, which kind of benefits from him a bit. Now, later on in this campaign, you will actually see Kanbei get a pre-deploy mission. It's actually considerably harder than this one, believe it or not, uh, despite the fact that you might not think so. Yeah, this mission, you, it, the fact that you're facing Flak will probably tell you everything you need to know. This mission is very, very easy. But it makes sense, because technically speaking, you can go into this run after the tutorial. Believe me, though, Yellow Comet gets harder. Even in this very batch of three missions, oh boy, there's one mission that makes this look like an absolute joke. In fact, there's one mission that makes the entire of Blue Moon look like an absolute joke, and I'm really not looking forward to it. Those of you who are veterans of this game will probably know which mission I'm talking about, and that mission is the very reason I did not start Yellow Comet until now. The fact that you can launch yourself right into this mission that I'm talking about immediately after the tutorial... Ugh... Something you really don't want to do. And you know what? Mercy mode is off. Hey, Flak! How do you like my big tanks? <laughs> you know he hasn't even built any... He hasn't even built any more powerful units. Wow! And it looks like the mission is almost pretty much over. This is a very, very easy mission. As much as I, I keep saying it, this mission, very, very easy. But it gives us a good opportunity to talk about Kanbei's main skills. And like I was saying, Kanbei's recons against infantry, they may as well be anti-airs. They pretty much one-shot them. Holy crap, have I only got that low of a power meter, really? You know what? I'm starting to think that I'm actually not going to be able to show any of Kanbei's powers in this mission. Uh, because, really, I'm not getting that much. Something actually I don't know. Uh, because Kanbei's units cost more than normal, do they charge. Does damaging them charge up your opponent's power meter faster? And does getting damage charge up his own power meter faster? That's something I'm kind of wondering. In fact, speaking of uh, speed of power charging up, apparently in the original Advance Wars, the one I never actually played, um, just a heads up, I never actually played Advance Wars 1, and that's actually going to be a good segue into something else I might want to talk about. In the original Advance Wars, apparently Kanbei's power meter actually charged the slowest out of everyone. He was tied with, I think, Eagle, but um, kind of interesting that, considering that Kanbei's actual power is really basic as far as powers go. Not that he needs anything more, really. I mean, Colin had some pretty interesting powers that were quite interesting tactically. Kanbei is a, well, let's just say, very, very unsubtle. Uh, if I get a chance to show one of them, I will, but I might not actually get a chance to show you them. So I guess I'll just basically say what they do now. Kanbei's regular power is Morale Boost. Its effect makes his troops stronger. His superpower... Um, has the totally awesome name of... Oh, speaking of powers, <laughs> Flak already has his normal, which is probably not going to help him that well, actually. <laughs> Considering all he's got is a couple of very badly damaged units, and he's, uh, yep, not going to do much well. And neck flooding is not going to save you now, Flak. I'm pretty much... I pretty much have this already. Wow. This mission went by so quickly. Ugh. 
If I do get a power off, it's probably only going to be the normal one. And you might notice I'm doing a little less here. That's because all uh, powers have a side effect of providing plus 10% defense on everything. Uh, on top of what the effects of... Unless the power would already give slightly better defense than 10%. Any power that does not say it will always give 10% defense to everything. It's kind of a side effect of any power, um, which really helps Colin quite a lot, actually. But anyway, like I was saying, um, yeah, um, I didn't get a chance to say it before. Kanbei Super has the incredibly awesome name of Samurai Spirits. I just love that. It's just one of the coolest superpower names in the entire game, in my opinion. And what it does is makes his troops even more, even stronger. <laughs> and it also uh, makes you inflict 1.5 times as much damage when counter-attacking. But seriously, on top of Kanbei's already powerful firepower, and the fact that you're boosting it by a further massive amount, do you really need stronger counter-attacks? Your counter-attacks are gonna kill everything anyway. <laughs> seriously. I do think it's kind of nice, though, because it provides actually kind of a nice link to his daughter, and uh, you'll be seeing why later on, and trust me when I say I'm not looking forward to it. But anyway, we've pretty much got flat completely on the ropes here. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's almost laughable just how pathetic this is. Okay, maybe we'll actually get slightly damaged here. I really want to show off one of Kanbei's powers, because believe me, it's it's. I just want to show off one of them. I don't want to have this mission over before I get a chance to show it. Chances are, though, I'm only going to be able to get a normal power off, but seriously, Kanbei's normal power is pretty ridiculous as it is. Like, I mean, like, again, he has possibly the most unsubtle powers in the whole game, but it's not like he really needs anything more. And things are looking very, very bad for Flack now. What else is new? You know, this might act. Well, what the hell? What? That only said 91%? What? Okay, that's weird. Um. I don't. Okay, that's really weird because that said 91% and I, and I one shot at it. Okay. I didn't think that Kanbei had any kind of luck effects on him. I don't know. Um, I know there is exact. There is. Okay, please tell me that past me is smart enough to block off that base. Please tell me. Once again, uh, this is probably the first time in ages I've been able to show the tried and true tactic of base blocking. Um, shoving your own units on top of your enemy's production facilities to stop them from getting more units out when you're going for a route here. It's always a nice tactic. Speaking of tactics, yeah, it's pretty easy to go for a route in this mission. I really honestly do not know why Flack is being so stupid with not creating any more powerful units, but uh, hey, um, I'll take it. This is only a two-star ranked mission, um, and it really does live up to its low rating. It's very, very easy, believe me. Very easy. But yeah, a good time uh, to show off Kanbei's abilities, basically. Oh boy, please don't... please don't kill. Oh good, it did. And another mech. <laughs> Seriously, you'd think he could do better than this by now, and I have not used my medium tank at all. I really need to change that. Uh, you know what? Uh, I don't think the medium tank can actually reach. Actually, let's see how much I do. 37% to a ship with a tank, really? Yeah, Kanbei's medium tanks are pretty ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, and now I'm going to go for the artillery to sink that thing. For some reason, the the enemy AI really loves using, um, just building, like, one lander just to act as a kind of a weird meat shield to make getting, um, to make, uh, getting a route victory slightly more annoying. <laughs> it's just really weird. Anyway. But yes, uh, Kanbei's boost applies to everything, so he is actually quite versatile. You can apply pretty much any tactic you want with him, provided it's not early game rushing, because uh, he really does not have the funds to do that. Um, well, his unit prices are too high, but still, hey, just don't be thrown off by his unit prices. Kanbei is easily one of the strongest characters in this game. Uh, and another way that he becomes really overpowered, if you're playing War Room or a few other maps, is there are some War Room maps that like to give him a massive property advantage. That is, well, yeah, makes him pretty broken. So, um, 
Yeah, there's one war room map in particular that kind of also strikes a bit of a chord with me because, um, well, I might actually have to show off that map eventually because, well, <laughs> given the country I live in, it sort of makes sense to show it. Anyway, um, rockets, I guess. <laughs> I really should just be pumping out infantry out of everything just to make my technique score or at least a little bit higher, but hey, I don't really like that. Okay, I've only got my normal, I may as well use it. Uh, slight problem there, um, his numbers are like, are nothing. He's only got two units left. Anyway, here is morale boost. Basically, all it does is increases the attack of and defense of Kanbei's troops even more than usual. That's basically it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Again, very unsubtle, but it's not like he needs subtlety. Uh, he is all about the path. He's really all about quality over quantity, really. And bang! That should do it, I reckon. And I get the victory lines with the awesome power music playing. And yep. By the way, this was always interesting. Kanbei will always mention that the enemy has been routed, even if you won by headquarters capture. Uh, the thing is, given this, how easy this mission is to win by routes, um, yeah, it does make sense. Kind of funny, because previously in Colin's first mission, uh, the mission always said that uh, you had captured the enemy's headquarters, even if you won by route. Kind of funny, Kanbei and Colin, still opposites. Interesting. And of course, I got a perfect rank there, but that's not really much to brag about. This is very, very easy, so... Yep, yeah, very, very easy mission to perfect score, really. You don't... I wasn't really even trying to get a perfect score there, and I still did. But anyway, that is all for the first mission of Yellow Comet. See you next time for Sensei's Return.